All right. Hello, guys. Hi, everybody. Welcome back, Welcome back to the Warp Zone. Been a few months, but we're back for a uh, post-Christmas special. That's right. The, the best of 2022. How could we not talk about the best of 2022? Um, in movies, games, everything. Uh, Jose, you're joining us. Uh, Keenan Hubble did not want to join us. Uh, we're going to just speak for him. He helped us write the article. But, uh, guys, we're just going to talk about our favorite things from the year uh, in every category. Okay. Um, and I, I guess we'll start with movies, which, Phil, you're the authority here for movies. What were the best movies of 2022? Uh, movies that left the biggest impression on me, number one was Clerks 3. I was a, always a huge fan of the original Clerks, not so much Clerks 2. But Clerks 3, to me, is Kevin Smith's grand return to form. It's just as funny as the original. It's really heartfelt. It's like the perfect uh, evolution for the characters into middle age. Uh, there's just a lot of self-reflection in there. That really stood out to me. also loved Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio on Netflix. Just a fantastic take on that material. Excellent animation. And then uh, the best documentary for me was Gabby Giffords Won't Back Down. It's just a very intimate story. Gets inside uh, her recovery and shows you some footage that uh, Mark Kelly shot himself that you never saw before publicly. So that was really interesting for me. Those are the ones that really hit me this year. Jose, we'll, we'll turn it to you. Uh, what were your favorite films? The films. I, going back through, Sean, I'd have to... See, the more I think about it, it's sort of really based on a lot of recommendations you all gave me. So that's why like, I, I trust you guys as being tastemakers. Uh, I can think of the Netflix version, the, the German you know, version of the All Quiet on the Western Front was certainly uh, left quite an impact and impression on me. Um, another recommendation, you know, came in for during down to Christmas uh, season uh, was the follow-up to X, which was Pearl. So I will shout out Keenan Hubble. He gets a special shout out in that sense for a slasher film. I was not expecting to be as, as well made as it was for the budget, all things considered to uh, how well it was uh, made and, and fleshed out. Uh, Top Gun Maverick, of course, left that's sort of like the, the popcorn flick of the year for me. Uh, now that it's coming back up on Paramount Plus, it'll be sort of those like easy uh, feel good watches that's going to feel like comfort food if you make time for it. Um, movie wise, I'm trying to think, and maybe there's a lot to choose from, Sean. Um, recently, I will let you guys know uh, I did see Avatar 2. Uh, probably not not grand in the scale the top gun maverick was the visual effects wizardry was i think is, is well worth at least investing your time and seeing it once uh james cameron i feel like sometimes he wishes this franchise could be r-rated because you get a lot of scenes where they really want to uh, i guess hone in on on the conflict between the the two sides the good guys and the bad guys in this series um but i don't think um the money the box office would allow for r-rated films to make the kind of budgets they need to recoup what they invest in, in producing it uh but certainly worth a watch for avatar 2 as well um i'll have to think back and look at more of the, some more intimate movies that i'll have recommended for you guys but that's just what came to my mind just fresh for you right now so uh, what do you have on your list, Sean? Um, well, my top movie of the year is uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. I think it's 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 not a perfect movie. It's a little bloated, but it, it has so much going on. Um, if you haven't seen it, it, it's a martial arts movie. It's a family drama. It's a comedy. It's it's a bizarre, just everything. It's, it's everything. And uh, great performances. It's, it's such a fun movie. And it's so... It, I don't want to say unique because it is kind of matrixy, but it's it's a breath of fresh air when everything is superhero movies or these big budget movies like Top Gun. Um, so I found it 
refreshing and a lot of fun. Uh, sticking with A24 too, uh, you, you'd mentioned Pearl. Pearl wasn't, it's not in my top movies, but we do want to give a shout out because it's Keenan's, uh, Keenan Hubble's number one movie of the year. Um, for the budget, they did a lot with it, but I would not, it's, it's, it wasn't my kind of movie. Um, Mia Goth is fantastic in it though. Um, other movies, real, there really wasn't a lot that came out this year I, that was mind blowing. Uh, I like The Northman, sticking with A24. The Northman, the final scene in that just sticks with me still. But other, otherwise, um, documentary wise, Moon Age Daydream was pretty good, but that, that was a very difficult movie, I think. If you aren't a fan of David Bowie, I don't see how you could watch it and really glean anything from it. I know you were you, you saw it. We discussed that, Jose. Would you would you put that on your list at all? That's why you, you sometimes need you know some trusted people to refresh your memory. That would be another recommendation. And to your point, Sean, if you walk into that movie with the background knowledge, fandom of Bowie's body of work, I think it enhances your experience. If you walk into it fresh not as familiar with his discography and you, you wonder sort of where where you have to fill in the gaps of information but definitely definitely a worthwhile watch if you're into especially if you're into music i think and, and bowie's um influence on pop music after his heyday so i agree yeah and i, I was gonna say i i also agree with you on all quiet on the western front that was it was it was one of the more brutal movies I've ever seen. It, it was a fascinating, fantastically made movie, but it was, if it, if it was too much for me, that's saying a lot considering the things I watch. But uh, otherwise, round, rounding out my top three would be The Batman, which is surprising for me given how much I hate superhero movies, but The Batman is just not a superhero movie. It's a detective thriller. The, the only uh, part that feels like a superhero movie is that finale which was still a good finale so uh that would round out my movies i like i said i just did not think this year was a great year for movies i don't know if if you'd agree phil um it wasn't huge but there are still some ones to kind of come out that are, should be the awards contenders like babylon i think just came out that's gonna be a player for sure anything damien chazelle does uh will uh, kind of reach that uh level but yeah, like it wasn't a great, wasn't a great year. Maybe a, about the same as last year. Kind of, I thought that last year was probably one of the weaker uh, roundup of best picture Oscar contenders I've ever seen. Like almost all of them were pretty flawed mm -hmm. in some way that made them. So we'll see what what ends up, uh, you know, getting elevated to that this year. And then, obviously, like some of the better films from last year weren't even nominated. So I hope that doesn't really happen. But yeah, I, I really uh, like the list that you guys have brought here. I think uh, those are maybe movies that could get some kind of uh, awards contention this year. For sure. Let's let's move on. Uh, and, and I'm going to toss this to you, Jose, because I'm not sure your familiarity with the video games of 2022. But let's let's talk the best video games. Phil and I have played quite a few. But uh We'll, we'll be able to talk on that, but let's let's hear what you have to say on this. Have you played anything? Well, I this is where you two pick up my very obvious weakness and slack. Although I will, I you know, to, to sort of circle back to a discovery, a conversation for me that that Phil very vehemently recommended to me was uh, the the Warner Brothers game, uh, you know, the melee game for their characters. Multiverses. That's right. Multiverses. That's right. I needed a refresher on that. I'm coming back off a week of, of recoup. Uh, but no, Phil, that that's certainly like that's been sort of a, a nice little mainstay that I've, I've kept going back to. And so granted, you know, di differences, you can compare and contrast its pros and cons to what, you know, Nintendo and, and the Melee Smash Brothers franchise has done better or worse. Um, but no, that's been my, my fun surprise. And I think I would recommend that to anybody be interested in you know kind of a, a nostalgic uh comfortable uh platform and characters and uh user interface it, it was pretty fun 
you know me, I, I stick to my bread and butter, which is those, you know, the Madden franchise and the FIFA franchise. And so, it's, you know, they, they make marginal improvements here and there, and you always just have to get used to the different uh, sensitivity for in-game play. And uh, I, I, I guess I know where my, again, I know where my bread's buttered on my video games. So I defer to you gentlemen to, you know, you, you've broken down all these wonderful games throughout the year, summer hits, summer misses. So what do you all think I should add as the best of the year? Man, okay. wonderful games. What a year it was for Sean moving up from the PS4 to PS5. Oh, yeah. Back up to the big boy table. I, I finally what was the did game it. that got you to do it, Sean? What was the yeah. straw that broke the camel's back? Oh. oh, this is embarrassing. It was Cyberpunk 2077 after I watched the anime. Uh, I don't even remember. Edge Runners. And then I ended up not even liking Cyberpunk. So I I ended up with a PS5 playing. I mean, God of War came out right around that time. So I did get to play Ragnarok, which uh, is probably my game of the year, Phil. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where you're at, but it's definitely mine. There's not the thing that's even close for me. That's absolutely yeah. the game of the year. A lot of people were on Team Elden Ring the whole year, and I, I see where they're coming from. Elden Ring is great. It's an, it didn't live up to its very high expectations, but and God of War stratospheric expectations too. But to me, God of War just absorbed me. It just so majestic. It just shows you what the medium is capable of, especially when you do move up to the PS5. Because I think that was that a, a only PS5 or was it PS4 too? I don't remember. It was PS4 too. Mm -hmm. But like to me, that I haven't played it on PS4. But to me, you've got a. It's the game to vault you into this generation right now. It's just. Uh, I love all, almost all God of War games, but to me, this really just puts together whatever they've done in the past and just lifts it up to a new level. I, I agree. Um, as far as the story goes, I, th I think the further you get in the game, the weaker the story is. I think for all the hype, it doesn't live up to it. But it's such a gorgeous game. It's so much fun to play. I, I don't know that I would say it's better than 2018, but it's certainly on par and i can see what they were trying to do with the story but i'm no spoilers here but it doesn't succeed necessarily because this is a video game if this were a movie i could see it but a video game still needs to have some some fun to it and uh friendship and kindness is not fun it's not why we play video games but Sean, I know that you're a big fan of stray just like i was we reviewed that together mm -hmm. uh, just a really kind of out of left field, strange game, very short, very easy. But I think that hooked both of us. I know it definitely got me. To me, that's up there as a game of the year contender. Not that I would put it alongside God of War Ragnarok, but that is just the type of thing I'd like to see more of where you just, the narrative is just so shifted. You are playing as a cat. That was really uh, entrancing to me. And just like, maybe not everything you do in the game is realistic, but then there are a lot of cat-like things you do in that game. Like just kind of like, you know, cuddling up to like little, uh, you know, pieces of uh, scenery or just, you know, meowing to your friends or whatever you do. Uh, very light, uh, easy platform. But to me, that was just visually, it was kind of entrancing. And uh, what did you think of that one, Sean? I, I agree. It was visually entrancing and getting to play as a cat. I, there was so much that was put in to into the game that a cat would do. You go up and scratch trees. I, I know I kind of had a freak out moment when you play as the cat and you jump up onto a keyboard and you can just walk across the keyboard. It's 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 minor things like that. It's super cute and, and a lot of fun. And you could tell the developers put a lot of thought and effort into every little aspect of the game. It, it, it was fantastic. But uh, speaking of the easy games, the, the fun and easy games, Lego Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Lego Star Wars was absolutely one of my games of the year. And I, I'm embarrassed to say that. In any other year, I don't think it would have made it in the top five at all, but I had so much fun with this game. I don't even like Star Wars that much. Yeah, and the Lego game... games had been in a rut for a while. You know, there hadn't been anything that really blew you away. Like, they had they were gotten that routine of releasing an adaptation of almost every big-time movie that came out. And honestly, there was a really awful Lego game that came out after this one, too, with Lego Brick Tales. But this mm -hmm. one was, it captured the spirit of what Lego Star Wars could be, and it was definitely a very ground up remake of Lego Star Wars, which kind of vaulted it into uh, public consciousness at first way back when. 
but this Lego start this take on the, the material is so much better than what came before. I thought. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And um, as far as any other games, uh, Cult of the Lamb, I think we can agree, absolutely stellar. Yes, definitely. Um, shows that the roguelike has so much more, so many more places it can go. Inscription was another one that I thought was was a lot of fun. A car, it was a card based game. Uh, it, I, I don't know that I put it as game as my game of the year in the top five or anything, but it stood out in a year that just had not a lot of standout. Elden Ring, God of War were your standouts, and El, I agree. Elden Ring, I can, I if you love Elden Ring, more power to you. It's it's too much for me. It's gorgeous. It's fun to play, but I'm never going to get very far in it. It's just not my type of game. Yeah, you've got to go all in on Elden Ring to get anywhere. That's for sure. And you got a lot farther with it than I did. Um, I just want a couple mention a couple others on Switch. You had you know, Mario Strikers Battle League kind of came out just uh, at the right time because of the World Cup. There's really nothing. It's more of a hockey game than it is soccer, even though it's got like a soccer motif. But just a, such a fun Mario sports game, and then being at a three-two, excellent uh, top flight action, you know, kind of combat game in the vein of uh, what you might have seen in like um, some of the newer uh, Resident Evil games. Just a really fun combo-driven combat game there on Switch. And and just for fun, just to be just to be a downer, want to talk about the worst game you played this year? What what would be your what would be your biggest oh, that'll be an down. easy one, I think. Is it going to be an easy pick, Phil? For me, it's Lego Brick Kills, but I want to hear what you have in mind, uh, Jose. Well, no, I I think when you both mentioned that, I think I might agree. And then and, and coming, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's sort of putting the cart before the horse because you all mentioned how it just wasn't some, it just did not meet your expectations your criteria and i think you know finding out it seems something innocuous enough like how bad could a lego game be and it turns out it just was not it didn't live up to the hype so I yeah and just, just to recap uh, if you haven't heard of this game which i credit you for not having heard of it because it's awful it's it's a game in which you tr you basically it's like a simulation of building a lego which is just, it makes it so much harder and more tedious than it would be in real life, uh, which is kind of the opposite of what the, a game should be doing. It's just uh, you have to line up like pixel by pixel where these little things should go. It just takes such a long time to do. Maybe it's a little better on PC. I played it on console on Xbox, but uh, yeah, it, it was real bad. Sean? Yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah. And that, that's not even the worst game we played this year. I, or at least I've, I've played some worse games. Um. Yeah, and it's gonna have to go to Samurai Maiden. I uh, <laughs> I asked for this game. I don't know why. I, why uh, we didn't get to play Saints Row? We'll say that much because if if we played that, I'm sure that would have ended up on this list. But Samurai Maiden, I I don't even know where to start with this game. It's terrible. You've never heard of it. D just keep it that way. Well, I mean, I'm I'm elucidating you now. But you play as a little Japanese schoolgirl who, within the first thirty seconds, is sent to feudal Japan for no reason. No explanation for that. Meets no, no, Nobunaga, Oda Nobunaga. She's in a temple that's burning, and she immediately goes, oh my gosh, I'm in a temple that's burning. Then spends 30 minutes talking to Nobunaga in the temple that's burning. It's it's absolutely terrible. Um, it only exists for a certain subset of anime fan who likes uh, miniskirts. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's not even like PS2 era bad. It's just bad. We played some. We played some PS2 era kind of uh, fun games like uh, Evil West. Give a Don't shout forget out to Digimon that. Survive. That was rough. Oh, how can I forget that? <laughs> um, there's also another another game that a PS2 era one that I'm seeing a lot of buzz on, which is Gungrave Gore. I haven't gotten a chance to play, but it, it seems like there's a little bit of a, a that old era just linear shooter maybe making a comeback uh, definitely not making a comeback with with samurai maiden that that game is is trash and i mean if if it's for you you'll know it's for you when you look at the box art that's what that's uh what i'll say on that also bring up star ocean 
real fast since we're talking about weird anime games. That that was a surprise, and I might put that in my top top five as well. I had a lot of fun playing that. That was last year, though, man. That's the game that you convinced me to play. I, uh, but yeah, I, I agree. Start. You had me playing Star Ocean and liking it uh, more than I thought I would. Um, yeah. But yeah, it kind of just lingers. I'm sure plenty of people are still playing that. Uh, it's just a deep game, a long game, and there's a lot to it. Um, but you were, you were disappointed by Final Fantasy uh, Crisis Core, the remake of that one. I know that, right? Oh, yeah. I, I would not say that's a... I, I gave up playing it because I just I don't care anymore. There's <laughs> there's too much fluff. The voice acting is terrible. The gameplay itself, it feels like a PSP game. If I were playing it on a PSP 15 years ago, I would go, hey, this is a lot of fun. Oh, I mean, man. it is not a PSP it. game. Straight to the PSP. That's a, that's a knock. They Well, I mean, it is a PSP game. Yeah. that they've remade but they didn't put kind of the care or love that went into final fantasy 7 remake it's if you're into this you might enjoy it but the story is just so anime beyond final fantasy 7 the characters it's like his name's angel get it he's an angel thank <laughs> you fantastic just so anime. clever so clever it's just an anime level kind of stuff the character genesis oh of course let's flip through a bible and and come up with whatever it's very anime in that regard but yeah i'm not i'm not, I'm not going to put it on the worst list but I'm not going to put it on a good list either not naughty or nice it's just it's just there it's just there yeah it was if not a good game game you're year final either. fantasy complete final fantasy completionist though that's you got to play it obviously you need to see uh, you need oh, to see the sure. story, I'm sure. Okay, what should we move on to next? We've done games. Well, you mentioned anime, uh, but yeah. you're saying oh. that Cyberpunk did not make your top list, right? I didn't even think about it. it That's it the only anime would. series I watched all the way through this year, by the way. And I, I liked it well enough. It was good. It had me hooked. Like What's how the... uh, it was. Let's watch the viewer count drop as we talk about the best anime of 2022 for a few minutes here. Um, this is where you shine, man. This is where this you got to highlight it. This is where we get Keenan back, and he's gone. This is, Keenan did not uh, want to join us. Um, I'll say real quick, I'll give a shout out to Bleach the Thousand Year Blood War. I haven't seen it, but that's Keenan's top show. Um, from what I've seen of it, it looks amazing, but uh, not, not interested. Let's see. Oh, Jeffrey Dahmer documentary is popular this year. Thank that you. That was that was a huge I, hit. It was a documentary. There were so many. This was, was, was a year of Dahmer content. Yes. You could not That's, like he, he came into his own this year as a serial killer icon, I guess you'd say, because there was a lot. I watched a lot of the Dahmer stuff too. It was interesting to me. Like I I grew up kind of like hearing about this as a you know young teenager child. So it was. I was kind of sheltered from some of it back then, especially the, the social media didn't really exist. You couldn't really like have this level of depth. But to me, it was interesting just to find out what it was that went into this really disturbing thing. And it really was an indictment of kind of the socioeconomic system back then. Like a lot of these calls were straight up ignored by police. That's why Dahmer was able to kind of thrive in his de demented ways that he was able to. He just, he was unchecked because he kind of found a, the cracks in the fabric of society that people just did not respond to. Very sad story. There did you guys was watch any Jeffrey. drama stuff too, or was I alone there? And I did not. There weren't any I, anime about Jeffrey. I I had seen Phil the 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 more of the tape series that they put together, not the fictionalized uh, series. That was what Evan Peters played Dahmer, and he played it yeah. apparently well enough that. You know, so many people tune in to watch that series and breaking some Netflix records or, you know, how they love to set their own bar for viewer metrics. But uh, no, the, 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 the tapes sort of reminded me of when in the same vein, if you were interested in the Ted Bundy moment that, you know, they had that those tape conversations and then Zac Efron, I think, played him in that movie. So sort of running some parallels there as well. Not the fictionalized series, though, the, 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 the more of the docu-series, I think. Was yeah, I watched cool. that one, too. I, I thought that was pretty well done, also. That had, that had me hooked. I, interesting the way it's kind of skipped on the timeline. I think they're just kind of drive, trying to drive home the point that really all these complaints against him were ignored for so long. It was how, 
how awful it was for that community to have to be victimized by him. Do we want to go back to anime or do we want to do TV next? Yeah, let's do TV. While we're TVing. We've, we've done all the anime we we're, can do. We're, we're TVing. Real quick, guys, I'll, I'll, let's do I'll, TV. I'll, I'll throw in my nugget for this conversation, my like hidden gem. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was until it got further in. Apple TV plus Severance. And I would now totally recommend it to anyone who hasn't watched. It's super, very philosophical, but not not hard to digest sci-fi in the sense that it, it functions as a period piece and a social commentary on work-life balance and trying to sort of separate your emotional trauma, the, the struggle we have internally to do that, and you know how you can overcome really you know, life-defining awful moments and so uh, the, the acting by you know uh what's his name um uh, oh man why am i blanking adam scott yeah and you're sort of only expecting him to be a comedic actor like you've seen him in parks and rec and Step Brothers. so the standout performance the other character actors you got john turturro's and the christopher walkins and the patricia arquettes just you know are familiar faces that bring you into the fold and obviously i'm excited for season two of that i can't recommend that one highly enough so uh, floors open to the rest of you for, for you guys that's just sort of my first thought for great tv this past year yeah, unfortunately, I left it off my list when we wrote this, but Ted Lasso on Apple TV Plus 2 also stood out for me. Severance, I need to see. Like, that's one of those shows that I've been trying to get around to get to. I've got to go see it. So thanks, Jose, for giving me the boost there. And thank you, Sean, for early in the year getting me to see Peacemaker, which was one of the best uh, TV shows, one of the funniest shows I've ever seen. That, along with Cobra Kai, which I know you love too, Sean, stood out mm -hmm. for me a lot. Um, and then winning time, Sean, we didn't even mention it in our written article until we remembered I, afterwards that we forgot. I had to rewrite it. it. Oh, did you put I, it in? Thank you. I, I put it in. I totally forgot <laughs> nice. about it until afterward. Winning time is just so great. So funny. Even if you're not a huge basketball fan, just it's so well written. Just yes. it's a clash of egos in the 1980s where really it was like an anything goes type roaring 20s type of time. Uh, looking back compared to the po political correctness that we live in now, just could not exist it didn't exist back in the 80s and that show captures the wildness of the times absolutely um that that has to be one of the best shows peacemaker of course best shows i i think we have pretty similar lists uh, cobra kai season five was just absolutely off the rails <laughs> i i don't know what happened this show started as a teen drama and was with the karate stuff and then it turned into kind of a karate kid now it's just a full-on canon film now they're just having samurai sword fights and people's limbs are being taken off and i don't know i don't know where this show is going to go but i i hope it just escalates more and more and this is just all over a karate tournament just i i, I want to be part of a karate tournament so i'm going to have a sword fight with a man like it's absolutely Fantastic. Petty revenge, baby. That's what sells in, in the karate in karate kid world. It's it's a bizarre show. I don't know why it's as popular as it is because this kind of stuff usually does not sell the schlock like this. Um, but as far as other shows worth watching, right now watching, I'm watching Alice in Borderland season two, which season season one was really good. I, I think it got kind of pushed under the rug because everyone got obsessed with squid game for a while there but man it's it's so good in the second season it's it's inconsistent there are some episodes that i and just long stretches that aren't very exciting but when they get into some of these death games because that's what it's about is they get transported to this world where everyone has to play these kind of death games some of them are more violent than others some of them are more you use thought there's one episode where they're in a prison where they all have these collars on their necks with a suit of cards on the back. And they have to ask the person, the other people, like, what suit is it? Otherwise, when they if they say the wrong suit after an hour, the collar explodes. And that kind of like psychological, that kind of psychological thing where these people are trying to play off each other and trying to, it, 
I love that stuff, but then there are some of these games that are just hyper violent and just exist to kill people and be very brutal. Don't have a lot of thought put into them. That that said, it has one of the best action sequences I've seen all year. Uh, season two, episode seven. It's a back alley brawl that goes on for ten minutes. Absolutely brutal, disgusting, violent, horrible. But um, it's it's a edge of your seat kind of show. When it when it does when it does things right, it does things right. You've got me hooked, man. I'm gonna have to check it out. I also want to just mention briefly, Better Call Saul. I thought. Mm-hmm. Finished well, ended up being on par with Breaking Bad. If you're a fan of Breaking Bad, been putting it off, definitely get around to Better Call Saul. Um, it's worth, it's going to be worth your time. Any parting thoughts from anyone else before we sign off here? Well, Just I'll excited throw for the next year for me, man. Go ahead, Sean. I'm excited I was for the say, next year. I'll, I'll throw in our best anime real quick between me and Keenan Chainsaw Man, which would go on my best TV shows of the year as well. I think even if you're an anime agnostic, you're not into anime, this is one of the best directed shows gorgeous animation great story great characters it, it, it's bizarre beyond comprehension but it's so worth watching i think phil jose you would act, actually enjoy it i've been trying to get others to watch it um aside from chainsaw man uh spy family or spy x family it's another one i think both of you would enjoy it's about the dad's a spy the mom's an assassin the daughter is a telepath a telepath and none of them no, the telepath, of course, knows that mom and dad are these two different job. have these two different jobs they can't tell the other about, but the other two don't. And it, it's so much it's so much fun as as violent as it sounds like it'd be. It's actually pretty wholesome. And it's just about like building a family together, that impromptu family, very Mr. and Mrs. Smith style. It's a little nicer. Of course, uh, I, uh, Keenan said the thousand year blood war bleach. Uh, that, that's about it for me. I'm watching Gundam, The Witch from Mercury, which is one of the better Gundam series of the past 20 years. It's it's super good, but if you're not into giant robot shows, probably won't do it for you. Music wise, I want to I want to toss this to Jose real fast. I was wondering if you had any opinions on any albums. I might I might need to pass on to you, Sean, because poor playing on my part, I should have brought in my charger. So I'm going to step out and grab the charger. Real quick. Okay, well, I'm going to say for Jose, Harry's house is his. Um, it, I I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree with you as a whole album, just not the one hit single. It's not all about the same as it was. You have to go to you know Harry's house and cinema. Those are like actual standout tracks. I'll be right back. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say Harry's Harry's house is probably the best of the popular albums. I'm not a big fan of it necessarily, but it has some good songs. Um, my top list was a bunch of weird stuff. Black Midi, which sounds like Primus, if you are a fan of Primus. Um, Black Country New Road, which sounds like Sufjan Stevens. If you're into a lot of very strange things, Phil, that you probably are like, what is he talking about? Yeah. You have any? Did you have any albums you listen to this year that you? Uh, no, I, I try to ignore music when I can. Unfortunately, it's not my thing. It's got. It's got. It's my blind spot. I'd say. <laughs> All right. Any any parting thoughts? Anything in twenty twenty three you're looking forward to? You know what? I wish I just was aware of more that's coming out. I'm just going to be surprised. I guess. <laughs> I was going to say. I'm trying to think. What was what's going to come out in twenty twenty three? John Wick Chapter Four. There we go. Yeah, that's uh, John and Wick always delivers. We know we're in for some good times there. I'm, I want to see what DC does. Uh, I know the Flash movie is supposed to come out this year. We'll see about that. Not so geared up on maybe the Marvel stuff, but I'm, w- I'm willing to give it the shot. I'm more impressed with what they're doing on Disney Plus on TV shows than the films, but we'll see. All right. Well, I guess we'll wrap it up here. We went over a half hour. We talked about a lot of things. Thank you for joining us. Oh, there's Jose, ready to say goodbye. Time. Made it, Made it in time. time to say goodbye. All right. Well, I don't know when we're going to warp next, but we're going to go back into that black hole and just <laughs> curl into a ball and stay there. The warp zone is always out there, Sean. Until oh. next time some mad scientist opens the zone. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us, guys. We will see you ostensibly next time. For sure. Thanks, everybody.